Katsu presentation. I'm Steve Munitonis calling in from Huntington Beach, California. That's near Los Angeles. And I want to present to you Katsu. Uh, katsu is a Japanese word. Uh, it means KA means additional and ATSU means pressure. Um, and uh, you'll see why it means uh, this in the next few slides. The uh, technology is based on pneumatic bands. These pneumatic bands go on your arms and legs, only the arm for arms and legs. Um, these bands are not tourniquets. So while they may look like tourniquets and they may look like it's keeping the blood out of the limb, it does the exact opposite. It actually keeps the blood in the limb. And that's what we want. We want engorgement in the limb as you're running or exercising, stretching, et cetera. The, this is a, a close-up of the band. Um, you'll see it's, um, it's made of neoprene and there is a small tube um, coming out of it. That tube is connected to a compressor, a uh, compressor box. Uh, this is the small, our smallest um, unit right now. This fits in the palm of your hand and it's called the Cycle 2.0. We also have a much larger unit. Uh, this is generally um, used in um, hospitals, university athletic departments, uh, physical therapy uh, clinics, et cetera. And the difference between the small handheld kind and the larger clinical unit is this clinical unit is you see here actually um, provides real-time uh, biological feedback. So we can track the person's uh, oxygen saturation, perfusion index, um, pulse rate, um, respiratory rate, et cetera. And because we do a lot of work with um, uh, wounded warriors, uh, quadriplegics, paraplegics, in addition to the elite athletes, um, this unit is uh, quite quite valuable to, to track every single uh, parameter. Um, this is actually an image and you can see here, um, I, I describe this as katsu at 300 millibars mercury pressure. Um, we don't use millibars mercury pressure um, simply because uh, people got it uh, misunderstanding, um, especially uh, surgeons and physicians. When they saw us, um, or they heard us say that katsu is at 300 millibars mercury pressure, uh, they immediately understood the katsu was a tourniquet, not a pneumatic band. And so we changed this to 300 SKU, where S stands for standard, K stands for katsu, and U stands for unit. So in this particular case, katsu was applied on the arm of this um, it was actually a, a soccer player, a football player, um, and it was at 300 SKU or 300 millibars mercury pressure. What is quite interesting about this is you see the artery below and the vein above. The flow into the limb, whether that's the arm or leg, remains unimpeded, and the venous flow or the flow returning back from the vein uh, I'm sorry, from the limb to, to the torso is slightly, very slightly uh, impacted. That's because the vein is actually uh, compressed um, very slightly. Um, and this is really the mechanical process of the equipment itself. What we're trying to do is we put these bands on our upper arms and upper legs, and that um, technically reduces the venous flow or the flow back from the heart, I'm sorry, from the limb to the torso. This leads to a blood engorgement in the limb. And then that begins a, a, a biochemical process in the body. Um, again, these are some details, but you can see here a, another illustration of a band on one side, on the, the right side of your screen. and the unbanded arm or the non-katsu arm on the left side. And basically what happens is blood is tra trapped in the limb, whether that's the arm or leg, and then that is 
um, uh, that in the, it leads to uh, the blood engorgement. When that happens, um, you, uh, if we could uh, click through to the, um, there we go. Uh, this is a representation of some of the um, chemical reactions that are happening as a result of trapping uh, blood in the lamp, uh, just some. Again, we um, began our process at the University of Tokyo Hospital. We then went to uh, uh, professors of neurology at the Harvard Medical School in order to better understand exactly what happens when you engorge in lemon blood and then um, uh, ask an individual to move or not move. And, and this is just a representation of what is actually happening in the body. Um, we'll go to the next slide and you'll see. Um, uh, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. Is actually we're having this uh, digital running show because of the global pandemic. And it was quite interesting to, to understand. It was, a, it was an experiment that really fell in our lap. Uh, now this is a picture of a swimmer, but most of all, just to, for dramatic uh, purposes, but we have had a number of uh, runners, basketball players, soccer players, uh, uh, baseball players, ice hockey players who have been using Katsu during the uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Um, when they use the COVID-19 uh, or during the COVID-19 lockdown, we had some athletes who used katsu and some athletes who did not use katsu. Now here in California, um, Boston, Miami, um, Seattle, et cetera, we're s starting to slowly go back to normal. So gyms, swimming pools, running tracks are now uh, being open. And coaches are telling us across the board, um, does not matter what sport or human activity they are, are coaching, um, but those athletes that use katsu in the um, uh, during this lockdown period are to the person, to the athlete, um, that are prepared for coming out. Uh, their musculature, their vascularity is nearly at the same. Uh, we knew this would be the case because you say here is an American special operator. So one of our special uh, forces um, soldiers, uh, very similar to uh, SAS uh, in Great Britain. Um, we, uh, some of our, our biggest users here in the United States are the Navy SEALs and Army Rangers. Again, um, very similar to your uh, British um, Special Forces. So they're extremely fit, uh, generally young, young 20s, 30s um, uh, men who are at the top of their game. They are training uh, constantly. And what we did here was a, uh, a three-week program where these men did not um, run. They did not exercise as normal. They did uh, katsu walking on a treadmill. And you can see, uh, you see some black bands uh, right under his, uh, right over his shorts, uh, up on his leg there and you see it's sort of a white translucent tube that is connected to one of our units. Um, this unit is uh, pumping in air and then deflating, inflation, deflation, inflation, deflation. And they continued that for uh, 20 minutes walking. It was not a power walk. Um, it was a, a, uh, a little bit more than a casual walk. Uh, but they were not running. They were only walking for three weeks, using this for 20 minutes, um, four times a week. So 20 minute katsu walking, as we call it. Um, and the outcomes were incredible. Uh, this paper was presented to the armed forces in the United States, and it really changed people's mindset as to what happens when you engorge uh, lemon blood. What happened here is uh, because these were our, uh, some of our elite soldiers, all of their parameters were uh, documented. 
their max VO2, um, their strength, their, uh, we use the 1.5 mile base time um, and a variety of other um, parameters. They did, um, again, uh, three sessions, I'm sorry, three weeks of regular Katsu sessions. So they were doing their, they were doing a very untraditional um, strength, stamina and speed maintenance program. And the effects were um, their mile times um, decreased. So three weeks non-running, um, only cots walking and their lifetime um, uh, 1.5 mile uh, run times were decreased. Their hypertrophy um, measurements had improved and across the board um, through this means of engorging the lemon blood and simply walking um, we demonstrated stamina was um, increased. So we knew this would happen. And again, um, getting back to um, the running community, how exactly does or is Katsu used? And it's used in three ways. One, um, rehabilitation, rehabilitation of uh, muscles, ligament, tendons, and bones. So whether you have a bone break, uh, ACL tear, uh, muscle strain, um, shin splints, et cetera, we have a set protocol how to use these bands, uh, both on your arms and legs. Um, and uh, so that's the one area. The second area is actually athletic performance. Um, we work with uh, the most elite runners, um, uh, in the United States and, and other countries, including Japan and China, um, and uh, uh, some countries in, in Europe, uh, Poland, Hungary, um, uh, we, France, and the UK. Uh, here, uh, what we do is, whether it's a sprinter, 100, 200, 400 meter runner, uh, or hurdlers, middle distance runners, five, 10 K runners or marathon and ultra marathon runners. Uh, we use it in a variety of ways with which I'll explain shortly. And then the last area, which is um, in our opinion, the best area to work with uh, for Katsu is recovery. And that's recovery from a vigorous workout, a long run uh, performance. Uh, if you're a track runner, you know, and let's say you're at the university level or elite level and there is a competition, a regional, national, or um, uh, international uh, recovery means between the preliminaries and semifinals and finals. So um, with all of this, uh, there are three areas we focus on, recovery, rehabilitation, and performance. Um, you'll see here, I'm just gonna show you a, a pretty dramatic photo of a Nordic combined runner, uh, sorry, skier. So he obviously um, had a horrific um, accident um, 28 days before the 2014 Sochi Olympics. Um, here he broke his humerus, um, tore um, tendons, uh, and his doctor recommended obviously surgery um, and his Olympics were, were out. He was one of the defending silver medalists in his particular event. Uh, but one doctor had heard of, of um, uh, Katsu that the Japanese athletes had used. And 28 days after that horrific exercise, he's actually here carrying the American flag into the opening ceremonies. Um, so it was at that point unheard of, although in China and Japan, they had known of this very rapid recovery um, of benefits of katsu. Uh, and whether this is a runner, a, a, um, a, 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 a soccer player, a basketball player, and this is a short video. Um, this shows um, Dr. Sato uh, with uh, Justin Gatlin, um, I understand. Um, he has been uh, caught for, or for drugs, but this was um, about a year and a half ago, I believe. And he came to us and he wanted to do, achieve three, three, three things. One, he wanted to improve his arm speed. He wanted to have his left leg uh, fire more 
and he wanted to understand how he can recover faster with katsu. Um, he is there with his coach and Dr. Sato, and he just does a series of warm-up exercises uh, with the bands. Um, and Dr. Sato's asked him, "How does he feel? You know, what is what is he doing?" Um, Justin, because of his interest in having his arms pump faster, his leg strength is is greater than his arm. You see Dr. Sato here putting um, the bands on his arms. Um, he is checking what we call capillary refill time. So you can see how fast the blood returns to uh, Justin's palm. And this is exactly what we want. We want the limbs to be engorged in blood. These are not tourniquets and they're not keeping blood out of the limb. So some of you may know this as a BFR, blood flow restriction. We're not restricting anything. We're actually enhancing things. Um, in the area of performance, you can see Dr. Sato asking Justin to stand up and, and run like he normally would, 10 seconds. Justin is running for nine, 10 seconds. Um, that's it. And he's been asked, how does he feel? That is the type of performance training that we would do with athletes. Literally that is. So whether you're working on your starts, your turns, um, hurdles, what have you, um, we literally put on the bands, inflate them to a certain pressure, and then um, do katsu. Um, now, at this point, katsu, a katsu workout is not over because what we want to do is we want to have the athlete use katsu and then perform again without katsu. And uh, this is how um, we would do it with a sprinter. Um, you can see... Uh, Dr. Sato is now explaining to the coach and him um, how, how and why. And this is a later photo where Justin and his um, current running group in Orlando, Florida were um, quite happy and, and they moved on. Um, so um, here, just the, the key point is you can use it for warm-up and recovery. So pre-workout, post-workout. Um, runners should use it both on the arms and the legs. Do it separately we only do arms and we only do legs we do progressive pressure so we start off very slowly a very low pressure and then we gradually build up and everybody is different um, you can even have a different pressure on one limb versus the other um, and this is true for everybody from uh, uh, triple jumpers um, long jumpers um, high jumpers etc um, some other key points is that when you do katsu, you are actually performing at the speed and with the same te technique that you want to perform in a competition or in a marathon run or whatever your chosen um, sport is. So again, I, we just used uh, this particular athlete, um, uh, Justin, and uh, I wanted to show you one other thing. Um, and this is a 45-year-old um, woman. She had been wheelchair-bound for, I think, five years. And uh, we used katsu on her legs. And if we get the video rolling, um, you could see the joy when she actually was moving her legs for the first time. Um, this is after about 15 to 17 minutes of katsu. And... Um, Anyway, uh, this is what we love to do. This is her husband, who's to agree, because I haven't seen her do that in five years. Uh, she cries for joy, and that is the mission of our company. Um, it's actually to bring joy uh, to our users, whether they're actually achieving a, um, uh, a you know, performance, lifetime performance best, whether they're rehabilitating and actually um, coming back from injury in unheard of amounts of time uh, or simply recovering well and getting ready for that next competition or next workout. Um, so this is in a nutshell. It's been about 10 minutes and I just wanted to introduce Katsu to you. Um, that's K-A-A-T-S-U. Um, and if we can go back to the first slide, 
Um, I just want to sort of summarize what you've seen. Um, athletes can use this, whether they're sprinters or long distance runners, they can use it um, uh, for uh, recovery, performance, uh, and, and uh, rehabilitation. Uh, in addition, uh, the athletes can use it for speed, for stamina, for strength. Um, how you use it for different um, things, and I'm just gonna pick a 10,000 meter runner uh, to a half marathon or to a full marathoner. Um, in this case, um, some of the early work was done uh, in Japan, um, where you see uh, on this particular screen, a, a position up in the top right corner with a woman with her legs. Here, uh, this is at the University of Tokyo Hospital. Uh, we did a little over seven, we worked with a little over 700 um, uh, cardiac rehab patients. So uh, over a 10 year period, so it's a little over 7,000 patients. We nailed down or we tested and proved and, and really refined our protocols uh, for the weakest population. Again, these were 7,000 people who had a stroke, uh, heart attack or heart bypass surgery. And the physician here, Dr. Marita, were um, doing it and in, a, in essence, what we have was we start out in the medical field and we progress to the athletic field. And I wanna thank you very much for your time. Um, it's been a wonderful opportunity to share Katsu with you. Thank you very much.